this is the challenge we've been facing for a long time, right? I feel like there's been tremendous work done by groups like Creative Intervention and the Storytelling Organizing Project of giving us examples in which people have addressed harm without the prison industrial complex to varying degrees with success around also not reproducing the values, the prison industrial complex, right? But um, how to then move it from those individual cases, often within activist communities, often dealing with harm perpetrated by people that we know, um, who we can bring in people that they know to hold them accountable. I mean, I don't want to undermine the success of those. Those have been huge. And they offer us a glimpse into what is possible. Um, how to scale those things up into, you know, the alternative 911 <laughs> that you call anywhere in the country um, is like, it feels like there's a, a chasm between those two things that I have no concept of how to bridge. Um, the only thing I can propose is that it, that it be central to all of our conversations, that we exercise some discipline in saying, if I'm going to talk about um, anything to do with state violence or anything to do with violence generally, I have to then, as part of that conversation, be thinking about what is um, the response to harm that I'm trying to bring forth um, as part of that conversation and what can I contribute towards building it. And that's a discipline I have to exercise because often I've said my lane is showing the harms of this approach <laughs> and showing how those are harms particularly um, that women, queer and trans people experience because I feel like in some ways we, and still, Jeff Sessions still is like, the one thing I'm gonna do for LGBT people is prosecute the shit out of whoever hurts them if it serves my agenda, right? Like, so, in many ways, law and order agendas are built on the backs of violence against women, queer, and trans people. So one, I'm like, hey, so this approach doesn't really protect queer and trans people. Let's see, here's a whole bunch of incidents of violence that prove that. Um, and I've sometimes, often, uh, including now, I've been content to say like, and that's my lane. Someone else's job, someone more visionary's job is to figure out what the alternative is. And I have to exercise the discipline of saying, actually, that's, that's also part of my job. How that turns into infrastructure, I think I just have to trust the process that at some point that conversation will become frequent enough and, and integrated enough into our broader conversations about society we want to build that then the energy will come that will then help us figure out what the institutions, what the scaling up of that looks like. I do feel like the number one question I'm asked anytime I sort of put forward an agenda around challenging criminalization and challenging police and criminal legal responses to any number of things, poverty, harm, you know, mental health crisis, domestic violence, sexual violence, et cetera. People are like, great, what's the alternative? And I feel like on the one hand, I'm like, it's not just my job to answer it. You think about that too, but also it is part of my job to answer it. And that's what we need to talk about. Um, I feel like also, the models that we were just talking about, they, like I said, they're limited to kind of within activist movement, within communities we know. I feel like we really need to challenge ourselves about, like, what do we do around stranger violence, right? Like, I feel like the, on the one hand, like, black trans women are really pushing us to be like, look, we know who's killing black trans women. It's black, not, it's black, not trans men. And so as a black community, our responsibility is to figure out how we're going to have those conversations so we can stop this epidemic of fatal violence and other kinds of violence against black trans women. And that has to happen before you start telling us not to pursue hate crimes legislation or hate crimes penalties, right? And so um, I feel like that needs to happen. But then also there are times when it's a stranger and someone who there is no alternate means of accountability. Sometimes it's a cop. They're not interested in community accountabilities processes, right? So then what's the answer there? And I feel like those, those conversations are just ones we need to be having. It's too easy to avoid them. And if we just start having them every time we have the conversation and stop doing what I've been doing, which is deflect that onto some other visionary, imaginary person who's supposed to come up with that answer, then um, maybe we'll get farther. <laughs>